Okay, so this is my first attempt at a rolling pin. The block is ambrosia maple, and I took and I inlaid a Celtic knot out of cherry on there. As you can see, the knot's a little off, and I had more time before the competition. So using what I learned on the first one, I got this block glued up. On this block, when I was cutting the diagonals, I didn't cut all the way through the board, and I made my inlays thicker. Sorry, I made my inlays thinner, not as thick, so that they would fit within the saw kerf. That cut my gluing time in half, and hopefully it'll help me out with those layup issues that I was having. So now we're going to turn this one and see how it goes.
Okay. All right, so these are the two rolling pins that I made for the rolling pin competition at work. I started out with this one. It's a piece of ambrosia maple with cherry inlay. It was my first one. As I mentioned in previous videos, I just cut all the way through the blank and glued them in. You can see where the knot is not very even. And in some places, the segments don't line up. Using everything I learned to make this one, I made this one here, which you can see it's very even and symmetrical. All of the segments line up. It's got a beautiful Celtic knot in a figured maple rolling pin right there. This is the one that I entered into the competition. And I was really excited, had high hopes for, but I didn't place. I noticed the size is quite different and the handle shape is quite different. Why did you do that? Was this a special request from someone or you just decided to do something different? Um, the handles on the first one, I didn't really know what I was doing. And, you know, everybody knows what a rolling pin looks like until you go and try and make one. <laughs> and so that was what I came up with on my first try. Between my first and my second try, I did a little bit of research, looked at them, found out the rolling pins need to be a little bigger, a little heftier, and I just like the shape of the second handles a little better. I think they look a little more proportionate, and they fit my hands really nicely. Right, if I put my hand on that one, my knuckles drag the ground. So that would be a little hard to, to roll something out, because, you know, I mean, I got kind of big hands, but if I grab a hold of that one and like I, I feel like I should get a hold of a rolling pin, mm -hmm. my knuckles are dragging the ground. But you this see. one's a lot bigger. I could see, you know, being able to kind of push that one around and get some work done with it. Not that I've ever <laughs> used a rolling pin. And so this one, I've never used one, is an open palm rolling okay. pin. So you put your palms on these big wide handles. And you roll it back and forth. I'm thinking about grabbing like a that. hold of it like a commercial pin. Where and if the... you grab this one, this one's also going to be open palm, or you can start and roll and push like that. With wooden rolling pins that don't have the bearings in the handles, then that's how they are. They ro You roll them on your palms open palm. instead of gripping the handles and rolling them. Okay, well that's pretty cool. The video's got a little bit long, but I think it's kind of cool how they were made so I'm gonna post up the whole videos and if people get too bored I guess they can just skip to the end and you can always ask in the comments if you have any questions about how they're made I'd be happy to let you know cool thank you